All right, so we've got our tree in the ground. Uh, made sure when we were backfilling not to go over the level of the root flare. Piled up a little bit of um, extra soil, some uh, upside down chunks of sod to make a little bit of a reservoir for water. Um, and then we went ahead and mulched it with the rest of our bag of soil pep. Um, you can mulch it maybe two or three inches deep, except you wanna make sure that you don't pile uh, the mulch up against the trunk. You want to keep that root flare exposed. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Then we want to make sure that this tree gets a lot of extra water um, while, when you water it, or excuse me, when you plant it. So I would say a tree of this size, you could easily put 10 gallons on that. Um, two five gallon buckets would be plenty, um, especially if you're in for a stretch of hot, dry weather. Um, usually springtime around here, we can count on some storms, so it's not too bad. Uh, one thing as you're watering it, you don't want to just dump the whole bucket on there, uh, especially with a real thick clay soil. Um, it's all going to just sit in there or just flood out. You want to kind of take your time, make sure it's draining in there. Um, if you find that you've poured half a bucket and it's just not draining, come back in a few hours. Um, you, very few trees want to just sit in a puddle. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's good to know. And then um, the first year or two at, that you have the tree, you want to make sure you're giving it a good deep watering um, about once a week or so. Um, if you go through a really hot, dry stretch like we get in Utah in the summers um, and it's looking a little droopy, absolutely feel free to give it more water. But we want to make sure that the water is getting as deep down to the roots as possible. So you could leave a little hose trickling on that for a while. Um, that would do it. Uh, a lawn sprinkler is not ideal. Um, it's better than nothing, but it doesn't tend to get the water down where you want it and you'll end up with a really shallow root system, um, which will make the tree more likely to tip over in a storm, that sort of thing. Uh, another good thing to do, um, we want to make sure that the, the grass, if you're planting on a lawn, doesn't come all the way up to the tree. It's best to leave a, um, a, a buffer there um, for a couple reasons. One, that it'll keep the um, grass from out competing the tree for water. So if you have, especially with a sprinkler, water coming down from the top, um, the roots of all that grass will suck up all the water before it gets to the roots of the tree. Um, and then also if you're out mowing the lawn, it'll keep you from accidentally scarring the tree with your mower or your edger. Um, one other thing I would just say, if we're dealing with a ball and burlap tree, um, those, we want to make sure the only thing that goes in the hole at the end is the tree. So we want to take um, the metal cage that's usually wrapped in, or if there's some sort of twine, we want to take that out. We want to take the burlap out as much as possible. Um, at the very least, cut it up as much as you can. And when you're loosening up the root ball with those, uh, tend to not have to worry so much about the girdling roots because when they actually wrap it in the ball and burlap, they have a giant machine that goes down and just basically cuts all the root edges. Um, but as I said, it's usually, if you're planting the tree at home, it's usually easier to deal with a container if you can. Um, those ball and burlap trees can be extraordinarily heavy.